Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Hustle out, hustle every single day I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave uh, To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way uh, Or the highway And in the driveway Is a nice thing Hey, how's it going, everybody? Uh, so we decided to start this new episode Or series of, of uh, videos That uh, we're gonna get into uh, Premise of it is I've done several different uh, Matches and areas around the, uh, the West Coast mainly Pacific Northwest And I get a lot of uh, questions about certain things I've done, especially from the kids. And um, one of the things people always do is ask me to critique their matches and uh, give them in input. And now when I do these things, I try not to be, you know, uh, an asshole about it and and be negative because that's not what the business is about. But I definitely do try to uh, to give positive feedback and um, and and try to lead people in the way I would do it. Now it doesn't mean it's the right way. It's just certain things I see that I, that I would do differently. Now, mind you, I come from an era where uh, wrestling was a little differently, uh, differently done. So I uh, think I think things differently, but it tends to trend well with my kids and the students that I've trained. Uh, so I try to give positive feedback and just things I would do. And like I said, I don't tell people they're wrong. I just try to give them ideas of things I may change. So what I decided to do now was to uh, critique my own match. And uh, one of the ones that I get a lot of uh, people talking about was uh, my time at Portland Uncut. Uh, I was doing uh, some stuff up in Portland, which is basically my second home. And I was fortunate enough to work for a man by the name of Roddy Piper on a Portland Uncut. And uh, I worked there for several months and finally got a shot to be the main guy. And I got to work by a gentleman by the name of uh, Sean Devari. Uh, and we had a pretty good match. This match we're going to watch is when I actually went uh, beat him for the title. Um, and what a lot of people don't realize about wrestling when you do things on TV, on the weekly shows, uh, we were doing house shows during the week. So we were working like the Dowls and uh, Chehalis and all Oceanside and all these small little cities uh, around Portland um, that were just house shows. And then we'd go to the tapings on Saturday. So I got to work Devari on, on tapings, or excuse me, on house shows a bunch of times. Uh, one time on TV and then, and then this, actually this match. So uh, I was really comfortable working him and he's, he's a great dude. He's, he's a, a really, really great wrestler. And I'll, I'll tell you a little, little, something I really learned from him after. But uh, anyways, man, let's get into this match. And uh, the setup for it is he's been running from me. He can't hide anymore. So they have a uh, lumberjack strap match um, in this. And on a, for the way the, the, the studio was set up, he has heels on one side, baby faces on another, and the curtains pulled back on that one. So uh, it's, a, it's a little different uh, uh, they, uh, a little different way they, they, they put it together, but it's what you got to do sometimes. So uh, here we go. Great music. I love that intro. Jacked. Look at that. Back in the days when I used to work out <laughs> all the time. And don't uh, don't bother about the uh, Under Armour logo there. Great time. I love these fans over there. Yeah, they probably couldn't get over nowadays. Get canceled for that comment. But Davari, when it comes down to it, there's no more place to run. There's no more place to hide. As a matter of fact, I've already got my victory party with all these people planned. And you know what, Drogu? And you know what, Drogu? You're coming with us. You, me, the Blanchards, Whitehead, the Thunder, we're going out, we're drinking a little of the adult beverage stuff, and we're going to party all night long. And you, Drogu, get on your phone, text your wife, Skype her, do whatever you have to do, and tell her Drogu's not coming home. And if you think you're getting away, go move and not come down with ugly. Not only are you crazy, you must be stupid. All right, Pin Ugly is running for his championship match. Yeah, it's such a great time. If you guys notice, there's a Fox 12 logo that is from Fox. Uh, in Sacramento, it's for Fox 40, but uh, it was a pretty big, a pretty big uh, deal. Uh, right before us, many nights was uh, Sunday Night Football would come on, so. 
uh, we were in a pretty big uh, viewing audience uh, at, this, at this time in our area from Oregon to Washington. Uh, we had higher ratings than WWE, TNA, and, and all the other all the other companies for just our local uh, viewing, not nationwide, obviously. But uh, and uh, commentating is uh, Roddy Piper, and I believe that's uh, Don Owens, maybe not Don Owens, but uh, Don Koss. <clears throat> Around the ringside down there on the bottom right, that's Colt Toombs. That's Roddy's old, uh, son. Pat Large. The Blanchards are over there. This is really the first time I had worked a former WWE guy that was uh, could really go. I had worked a lot of legends, but uh, man, this he just Debar was so good. See right there, I wish I'd turn my body in a little bit more. I messed that spot up, but it, we made it work. That's part of with him being a true professional. He covers for all my fuck-ups. And a weak sell there by me. It's kind of stuff you wish you could go back after you, you know, my punches are awesome. Though. But when you, uh, you're actually doing it, you know, you think, oh my God, this is great. You watch it back and then, uh, as the years go by, you watch it back. And that's Ethan HD right there. Fucking superstar. As you watch it back later, you're thinking, man, what the hell is I doing? And, but, you know. And these fans here, they would, they would be... Uh, we would do four tapings in a day. Um, early in, it would be two days of tapings. And then they even went to like eight in one, one day for a while, but it didn't work. But... Anyway, some of these fans, they did what's called the tur tail, tailgate, turnbuckle tailgaters, and they'd actually make us lunch and stuff because they knew some of the guys were getting screwed over on pay. So they uh, had a uh, big barbecue and stuff for us, and uh, it, was, it was pretty awesome, man, that the fans do that, you know. And this is where I really learned, like, timing on TV because uh, he was going, man. He just kept moving, and, you know, you're doing some indie stuff. And that's how you get over with the promoter right there is you hug his son. <clears throat> but if you notice what Davari did when he, when he was put in this match, because pretty much we called everything out there, he set the tone for this really well. When He, he went out to his, his side, and they didn't hit him, and then went out to uh, my side, they didn't hit me. And then if you hear Piper in the background um, talking about it, he's going out to ringside to fix all this. And it just totally, when you got guys like that, man, and working at that level, it's just awesome to see how this stuff really works. Hey, mind you, Piper, this was a voiceover done later in the studio. They were not even at watching it live. I mean, he was watching it live, but he wasn't commentating live. Listen to Roddy. And uh, right here, the ref fucks up. The guy's in the ropes, and he doesn't break it up. So, I, I don't know, but that's just, that's just me being me. I pick on those small things. Here we go. My cross face. And I don't remember this because this, right now my cross face is looking strong, but uh, towards the end I get blown and it's not looking so great. But and There we go, the heels don't pull me out, but they beat the shit out of me, which is great. See, that's where I really, when you're on TV, you really got to learn to sell up and look at and, you know, feed for the hard cam and stuff. And what, one of the things right here that I, that I didn't understand till later is I'm dying right here. Like, I get hit. I, I'm fucking going down to the ground. Like, I should be working up, and I'm not. I'm just sitting there taking a beating. And, you know, half of me is blown, but the other half of me is just so used to working indies uh, where I'm doing, you know, house shows. Not house shows, but just matches on fucking mud shows and shit where people do this all the time. I mean, look, I'm, I'm fucking dead selling. You can't see my face. And... Uh, yeah, I do a shitty kick out. I try to get up, but uh, you know it is what it is. And he's trying to make me go. He's telling me move, move, come on, come on. And my timing for uh, TV is just not what it should have been. And then of course I sell down to my face again. You know, and uh, one thing I, I learned from uh, another wrestler I had a feud with here 
uh, Tokyo Monster Kahangas, is he would always tell me, why do you why do you bump down to the ground all the time? He's like, you make me have to pick you back up, and that totally made sense. I mean, at this point in my life, I had been wrestling almost you know 12 15 years and i was still learning those things you know when you don't do tv and the other tv stand i did i was doing tag with Vinny, you know and we were doing the cartel and generally we were feuding with the scum and or army of darkness and uh and uh, the blanchard so it's a it's a little, a little diff, different uh, match you know if you see him getting the iggy right there a little different match when you work with guys like that you know but uh this is my first real run as a singles uh, main guy so it's a little different uh a little different tempo you gotta work. And of course, Davari's in freaking phenomenal shape. So yeah, from right here, he, he kinda got lost. That's one thing I'll say about him, and we just make up for it. And then there is one other spot. I remember vaguely this other spot coming up. Hits me and, I, and it's usually on the third one where you're gonna do, do the block and fire back. He started talking to me, and uh, I automatically just stopped and listened. So he got another shot in there and ended up being on the fourth. But but that's just you know uh, him just you know trying to overcompensate for. Uh, and right there, look what a fucking piece of shit. I'm not selling him up for compensating for me not being uh, at his level, you know. And I remember at this point, we didn't tell uh, the boys what the finish was. And one thing with Davari is I always, I always see is he, he, you could fucking see him talking all the time. And he, he did mess up this spot, but uh, he's so good you can't tell. But you could always just see him talking all the time. And uh, he makes it obvious, but you know, he's used to wrestling in front of you know, thousands and thousands of people. And when you wrestle in a studio like this, you got to be a little bit more discreet. Here it is, the finisher that not a lot of people can take properly. So I stopped doing it. It's a weak cover, too. Hard cam! Dad. Yeah, see, sometimes I get pissed off. Slow as shit. That's my strong style spot. And then here's my second cross face. Looks weak. You can see how uh, that's a legitimate I'm blown sale right there. And it was, you know, this whole finish was Davari's idea, uh, except for the turning it over right there. But this was his his idea to end it. Look at my hands. Look at how weak that is. But you know, got over. But it was his idea to, to go for me to go over that way. He wanted to tap to me, and uh, that which was awesome because he didn't have to, you know. Uh, so we didn't tell the boys, and you see them generally come in surprised and shocked that that I wanted to just quiz and Pat Large and my crew, man, and they're my boys, the Blanchards. Uh, what a catchphrase! And I remember at this point right now, I had the kids come in. Uh, Roddy came to ringside. He wanted me to cut a promo, and I was so freaking blown. It's the first time I ever told a man no. I looked at him, I was like, <laughs> I, was, I shake my head saying, no, no, no. <clears throat> and uh, it's just because I was so blown. And I just think there was just a lot that went into me being so blown. I know the lights too was really rough. But yeah, man, it was, uh, that right there was a, one of the great, greater, greater moments of my career. And uh, I really enjoyed that time there. And uh, one of the things with, with uh, when working Davari uh, is that uh, you 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 learn? I, the biggest lesson I learned was that the dude is is so confident, and uh, what you have to take from that is he's not arrogant, it's not cocky, and he's not like worried about going into a match and worrying about my ability. He's just confident that he can get me through it. And uh, mine, I was no, I was no, not a piece of shit, but he knows in his own ability what he can do, and he's he actually chose me to take the belt over from him when he had to leave. Um, and he had seen me work, so he knew that I wasn't a piece of shit. But he was so confident what he can do, he knew he could carry me 
to a good match, and he did. And that's one thing I've learned, and I try to tell my students is if you're if you're confident in your own ability, you can work with anybody. You know, it's when you start getting, you know, uh, nervous and and scared, it's because you're not confident. Um, now there is chances that you know you, you're going to go work somebody a name, you get a little, you know, a little a little scared or nervous, but you know, for the most part, you you should be confident enough to know that you can get people through matches and just work. And uh, true professionals do that. So. Um, but anyways, man, yeah, I, I had a great time there in Portland. We have more matches we'll watch. Uh, the next episode, I'll probably critique one of the kids' matches. Or, you know what I'll probably do is get one of my really, really bad matches. Um, that match right there, I'll probably give it. For the whole thing, um, the whole setup and everything, and the uh, the meaning of it, probably an A+. plus. For the actual things I messed up, uh, probably a C or a B. I, there's a lot of things I needed to work on, but it's just, you know just what it is, so... Uh, the next one, I think I'm going to pick on a really, really bad one of mine, and I'll just rip it apart. I'll, I'll be more brutal than I am on most people. So, um, anyways, man, don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell icon, and I will talk to you all later.